Will the church today remember St. Irenaeus? He was a bishop and a martyr who lived in the second century. In our entrance antiphon, the law of truth was in his mouth. No dishonesty was found on his lips. He walked with me in integrity and peace and turned many away from evil. We pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. As we begin, we pause for a moment this day to ask the Lord to shower his blessings on the many people in our world, especially those who are suffering. We ask for God's pardon for our faults that have caused hurt and pain and suffering in our world. And so for God's healing, God's pardon and mercy, we pray. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation and the truth. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who called the Bishop St. Uranius to confirm true doctrine and the peace of the Church, grant, we pray, through his intercession, that being renewed in faith and charity, we may always be intent on fostering unity and concord. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the second book of <clears throat> sorry, the Kings. In the tenth month of the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign, on the tenth day of the month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and his whole army advanced against Jerusalem in camp around it, and built sea walls on every side. The seeds of the city continue until the eleventh year of Zedekiah. On the ninth day of the fourth month, when famine had gripped the city, and the people had no more bread, the city walls were breached. Then the king and all the soldiers <coughs> left the city by night, through the gate between the two walls that, near, that was near the king's garden. Since the Sardinian had the city surrounded, they went in the direction of the Araba, but the Shaldian's army pursued the king and overtook him in the desert near Jericho, abandoned by his whole army. The king was therefore arrested and brought to Ribla, to the king of Babylon, who pronounced sentence on him. He had Zedekiah's sons slain before his eyes. Then he blinded Zedekiah, bound him with fetters, and had him brought to Babylon. On the seventh day of the fifth month, this was in the nineteenth year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar, <coughs> captain of the bodyguard, came to Jerusalem as the representative of the king of Babylon. He burned the house of the Lord, the palace of the king, and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every large building was destroyed by fire. Then the Saldian troops, who were with the captain of the guard, tore down the walls that surrounded Jerusalem. Then Nebuchadnezzar, captain of the guard, led into exile the last of the people remaining in the city, and those who had deserted to the king of Babylon, and the last of the artisans. But some of the country poor, 
Nebu sa radin, captain of the guard, leave behind as vendessers and farmers. The word of the Lord. Our response, let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. By the streams of Babylon, we sat and weep when we remembered Zion. On the aspens of that land, we hung up our harps. Though there are captors as of us, the lyrics of our songs, and our despoilers urge us to do us, sing for us the song of Zion. How could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. May my tongue cleave to my palate, if I remember you not, if I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy. <clears throat> Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him, and then a leper approached, did him homage, and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I do will it. Be made clean. His leprosy was cleansed immediately. Then Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, as Jesus was merciful to the lepers, so was the saint that we remember today. He too was kind to those who opposed the Catholic faith. Little is known about the saint that we remember, uh, but he lived sometime around the year 130 to 220 AD. What we do know of him was that he was a peacemaker and a man of great patience, and when it came, especially when it came to teaching the Catholic faith. As Bishop of Lyons in France, he was a strong and effective opponent of Gnosticism. Gnosticism was one of those early Christian heresies that believed that material things, physical things in the world, are evil. So the flesh was evil while the spirit was good. Salvation was only available to a few whom Jesus shared the secret knowledge with. So to attain salvation, we must be liberated from the, from the bonds of matter, from our physical being, and enter into a refined dimension of the spirit. However, Iranius showed them this, that this was not the good news that Jesus came to share with us. Iranius taught what the church taught, which is that salvation is possible to everyone and not just a select few. When Jesus came among us, he came both in the flesh and the spirit. So creation and all matter is not bad, it is good. In the Genesis story, after the sixth day of creation, when God saw all that he had made, God admired it and said that it was all good. 
Yes, evil entered the world through disobedience, but was restored again through Christ. So our bodies, our physical world, is not primarily evil, even when St. Arrhenius opposed Gnosticism. But he was gentle with its followers because he didn't want to defeat anyone. And said he showed them great respect and love because ultimately he wanted to win them over to Christ. May his kindness and patience inspire us this day to live likewise. Let us pray. Well, this day we ask the intercession of St. Irenaeus to help all Christians to give witness to the Catholic faith with love, wisdom, and gentleness. We pray to the Lord. For the victims of war and violence, that, wi that, that justice and peace may one day soon be restored in their lands and in their hearts, we pray to the Lord. In this Pride Month, we remember our gay brothers and sisters and all who feel marginalized. May they experience love, support, and acceptance from the community of faith. We pray to the Lord. For all who struggle this day, whether it is with their finance, their health, the place to live, or broken relationships, that as Jesus healed the leper, the Lord may also bring healing and wholeness to their lives. We pray to the Lord. And this Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Father Thomas Louis Poe. So for him, for all who have died, and all who mourn the loss of a loved one, we pray to the Lord. And for your intentions. For all of our intentions, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, you who are kind to the leper and to sinners, hear the prayers of your children, and in your goodness, grant them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, food of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, food of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray then, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice we offer you with joy on the heavenly birthday of St. Uranius bring you glory, O Lord, and instill in us a love of the truth so that we may keep the church's faith inviolate and her unity secure. Through Christ our Lord.
the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr, Uranius, poured out like Christ to glorify your name. He shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Jesus your Son. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are yours. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy the air for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember Father Thomas Louis Poe and all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have Mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With one heart and one faith together we pray, Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our communion antiphon. Remain in me as I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me and I in him bears fruit in plenty. Let us pray. Through these sacred mysteries, we pray, O Lord, 
forgive us in your compassion and increase that faith which brought glory to the Bishop Saint Irenaeus as he maintained it even until death. And may the same faith bring to us who truly follow it justification in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Have a wonderful day, everyone.